Hi there, Phyllis Moore here, Philosophically Speaking. And I, I want to represent things as accurately and authentically as possible. And I tend to have an approach of positivity. You know, when I speak to people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group or just that I'm in a conversation in day-to-day -day life, but also if I am addressing people, you know, such as, such as I am here on this channel, that, you know, I try to have the glasses half full mentality or things are going well or try to focus on the best possible silver lining, if you will, because that's just always better. But that does not mean things are great. That does not mean that our lives are perfect or circumstances are such that we are happy because most of us will wait for things to go well, for good news to come in, for us to be validated or affirmed or encouraged or on the receiving end. And that may or may not happen. So I guess the, the bottom line on that is that we can't wait for the results or the final verdict or the, the, the vote to come in in our favor in order to be happy or content or at peace. Those things may or may not happen in our lifetime or certainly by the end of the week or, or whatever. We can't wake up and say, today's the day I'm going to get good news. Mm, that's a bit conditional, right? Well, let me just pause and ask you please to click like, share, and subscribe as, as I always do. And now to get into a more serious note because part of the reason that I go into that mode is because my nature is to encourage other people to pass along something that will provide hope or you know kind of hang in their spirit stay the course and part of it too is because we, we don't want to or need to dwell on the negatives you know to worry to dig in our, our heels and be resentful and angry as if we are evidence keepers I, I read that in a book one time that when when folks have been mean or malicious to us or unkind and and the, the tendency you know is to hold on to that and go no no no, no I'm gonna hold on to this like it's files like I'm a, some kind of a lawyer and I am going to plead my case so that if it ever comes up I am going to let you know chapter and verse what this person did to me about me what they said you know all the evidence that I have collected and sometimes that file accumulates in our brain that we are thinking about it and, and processing you know a conversation or our closing arguments whatever and we we hold on to things that maybe are taking up space in a way that isn't beneficial to us and I read not long ago or actually I heard I heard someone say this and I don't know who to attribute it to I tried to look it up to see if there was someone that was you know credited with making this comment but I did not find that and I want to share it with you maybe it'll resonate as it did with me be careful what you think be careful about your thoughts your body is listening and I'm not trying to get new agey or anything like that but to make the connection that those programs that are running in the background in your brain the thoughts that we have whether conscious or not your body is listening and those thoughts that we dwell on or entertain or, or that consume us at times or maybe just come through like a, a thread throughout our day we can hold on to that in terms of like a mental or emotional cancer it can cause us to lose our peace lose our tranquility and distract us from those happy wonderful positive potential things that that we could do to make better quality of life and and I'll, I'll tell you just as a, as a quick example I'm not gonna go into it a whole lot today but but I will unpack it as as we go on my parents have been 
in declining health for a while now. Hard to say how many years, you know, you start retracing your steps and realizing, you know, this happened and then that happened and it unfolds gradually and one day you realize, wow, you know, they've, they've struggled. And chances are it's only been maybe three to five years of this. But, you know, sometimes life unfolds at such a, a pace that we don't notice it until you do. And I, I guess I look at where they are and I can't dwell on it because it will make me terribly sad to process what is the quality of their life physically, mentally, emotionally, where they are. Um, and I'm not one to live on the surface. You know, I like to um, value relationships and treat people with dignity and respect. And I want them to have quality of life. And right now, and especially during the pandemic phase that, that many of us have or still are experiencing, that at 88 and 89 years old, they were tremendously high risk, of course, because that, that age population was really a vulnerable part of this. Um, and so far so good. And I really have had to process a lot as, as I've seen other people do as well, you know, when they have aging relatives or, or different dynamics that make them have to view life differently. And certainly when we go through these experiences, whether directly or indirectly, if we are fortunate, we come out of that with more compassion, with more awareness and, and we see life differently. We see the end of life or aging or death or, or just the reality of things. We see it differently and, and that's as it should be. But again, I go back to dwelling. Do we dwell on that and, and focus on it, but not to the point where it distracts us from enjoying life, proceeding and, and going on and not letting it kind of throw us off the road and into a ditch and then we they, we linger there, which is not something that, that we should do. But um, we all have things that we can, that can claim our thoughts, that can, can pull us in another direction. That doesn't mean we don't care about them if we ignore it, but it does go back to that basic truth that in the Bible it talks about the peace that passes understanding. And to have joy, to have peace, to have contentment, um, to be centered is not an easy thing. It might not even be natural for many of us, but certainly we can have it. We can have that kind of, I, I guess, strength, inner strength, and peace, happiness, contentment, joy, all of those things don't have to be conditional on good things happening or on our circumstances. But it likewise, you know, you don't want to be a victim of circumstances. That's, that's probably where you get that, that you don't want to be buried under them. And so that's why I seek to look every day. It's not to be selfish, but I realize there are so many things I cannot control. I can't control their health. I can't control their well-being. In my case, my parents. Um, I am so thankful and blessed that they have a nurse that is caring for them and actually has moved into the house because you know that way she can can care for them and be there if they need something especially in the absence of myself being able to get there because they're 90 miles away and certainly I don't want to bring anything in that will compl you know I guess compound their issues physically and, and things. I, don't, I certainly don't want to be a carrier of anything, but um, so we're kind of waiting it out. But I say that just so you'll know that, you know, I may talk a lot about positivity, the glass is half full and, and all those kinds of things because I am seeking that myself and because we certainly need to lift each other up, raise each other up and move into the best possible direction and enjoy the journey because none of us knows how long we have on this path that we're on. So I do encourage you to see reality, that's fine, to see it, but also to seek a higher good, 
What are the things you can be thankful for? Start making a list. You know, what am I grateful for? What are the good things? Before you dwell and, and kind of veer off course and go, oh, but all this stuff, is don't stay there. I go back to that thought. I'm going to say it one more time because when I heard this, I thought I need to remember this. Be careful about your thoughts. Your body is listening. I don't want to internalize anything, you know, just like I wouldn't ingest poison. I don't want to have anything in my brain or in my heart that is counterproductive and is really not going to let me continue to be an encourager of others as they have been to me. So we need to pass that on. That should be contagious, what we, what we do and how we, how we think and how we talk to ourselves, about ourselves, and about other people. So don't beat yourself up today, and don't beat up anybody else. So that's just a good rule of thumb. No beating up anybody, ourselves included. But um, take good care of yourself, take a deep breath, and just try to find the silver linings that are there in your own life and in the circumstances around you. The lessons are there. Learn them so you don't have to repeat them. Take care. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. See you later. Mm -hmm.